All right, folks, I would like to call to order the April 8th uh, Community Law Enforcement Partnership meeting. Um, roll call, please. Steve Borzon. Here. Laura Conover. Isabel Garcia. Here. George Haney. Here. Christian Lundrum. Present. Dorlina Luna. Present. Kevin McNichols. Here. Terry Parrish. Here. Tierra Rainey. Here. Jessica Rodriguez. Zaira Serrato. Here. J Jaime Tadeo. You have nine. Nine members, you have a quorum. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, if you are able, please rise for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Okay, um, we do have two speakers today. Um, I would like to call uh, Steve Diamond, and you have three minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Uh, do you have a time? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Steve Diamond. I am a resident of Pima County. And I just want to say that I've been seeing, and I know mem numbers of you have been seeing, rumors flying around for the last week or two about uh, how forthcoming Sheriff Napier has been about the Operation Stone Garden grant application this year. And I urge the commission to create a space and provide the space and time for the sheriff to speak as completely about this as he wants and to clear up, clear up any questions that may be in the mind of the public because I think the public really wants to know and deserves to know the whole story about the situation surrounding the grant application and the information about the grant. So I'm sure that you intend to do this, and I urge you to proceed as well as you can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Diamond. Um, we have another speaker, uh, Richard Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez, you have three minutes. <coughs> Buenos dias. I'm Richard Hernandez. I'm also a resident of Pima County. I believe the commission and particularly the people of Pima County need to be aware of some concerns that I have about this application for Stone Garden. I know historically we've had it for years, but just because we've done something doesn't mean it's right. I have some concerns as a taxpayer. The Pima County Sheriff's Department right now has more administrators than it's ever had in its history. If the Pima County Sheriff wants to discover where he can have extra money to do this kind of work, he can cut his administrative staff. We are down to 80% in patrol. Those are the people who protect you and me. Our focus needs to be the people of Pima County. I'm going to say to the Sheriff, and he's here, if you want to work for the feds, go work for the feds. You work for Pima County, you're a public servant. While there are pros and cons in the Stone Garden, I can see both sides of it. First, you need to clean up your own house. We need to focus on taking care of the people who live here, the taxpayers, because you're a public servant. We need to make sure we have enough uniform folks out there to protect us all. So this, to me, is putting the cart before the horse. It is time for significant change, and let's start with in-house. Yes, there's some definite issues the Stone Garden brings to us, but we need money, right? That's what I hear. The reason we get this is for money, such as equipment and all of that. Well, I can offer you lots of ways to cut it, and we start internally. 
Thank you to everybody on the commission. I know you're very passionate about what you do and the position you take. I take the position of the tax voter who says, first priority is the people in Pima County. If you want to go do the Fed's work, Mark Napier, go do the Fed's, go apply over there. You're a public servant, you work for Pima County. Let's take care of Pima County first. Good luck to everybody on the commission. I think it's important what you're doing. Don't forget, you're here to serve us, we, the people of Pima County. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Um, that concludes Call the Public. I would like to uh, move the approval of the meeting minutes for December, February, and March. Do I have a second? Any discussion? Questions? I would just like to correct something on one of the minutes on the December 10th, 2018 minutes. Commissioner Luna? Um, I believe it's page four, item five, um, where it says that uh, Captain Thiel indicated the Sheriff's Department did not have a role in immigration law. If I could just um, suggest a, a change in that word, it's not R-O-L-L, -L, it's R-O-L-E. <laughs> Uh, you have it too. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, we can make that change. Uh, so the, is there any other questions or discussion on the minutes? Commissioner Garcia? Yes, good morning. I, I just have a, a question of order here. I'm very glad we have a quorum and I'm very glad to see Mr. Parrish and Mr. McNichols here, but did you not resign no, from I the commission? Not, I did not resign. My attendance was requested to be withdrawn until, um, oh. until uh, the super, Mr. Chris, Supervisor Christie changed his mind. But I appreciate your uh, pleasure in my presence. Thank you. Um, any other questions about the, uh, the meeting minutes? So I would amend the motion um, to include the spelling change for the proper grammar. Okay. Um, so the motion is to uh, accept the meeting minutes with the grammatical change. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes, thank you. <coughs> meeting minutes are accepted. Next item on the agenda, item five, is a grant acceptance for the Phoenix Police Department uh, Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Uh, would anyone like to move this item? I will make a motion that we approve this as a grant. It is uh, moved and seconded. Uh, do we have a presentation on this item today from the Sheriff's Department? Uh, good morning. My name is Lieutenant Steve Carpenter. I work in the violent crime section for the Pima County Sheriff's Department. I do not have a presentation, uh, but my supervisor and detectives and I are here in case there are any questions um, about the funding. Uh, are there any questions from anyone first? I, I oh, would you give us a, and I know there's a little write-up here, but would you give us a, a, a brief um, overview of, of the program? Oh, certainly. Uh, at the Peep County Sheriff's Department, we have a section called Violent Crimes. Uh, within Violent Crimes, there is a unit called Crimes Against Children. Within that specialty, there is a area known as Internet Crimes Against Children. Mm -hmm. We are part of that task force uh, that is statewide. Uh, the Arizona Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Occasionally, uh, each fiscal year, uh, sometimes there is available grant money and sometimes there is not. Um, in the past, we've been successful in one year in receiving funding. Uh, last year, there was no funding available, and this year there is $10,000 available. We would like to uh, receive that because it's being offered, and it will specifically be used to fund uh, equipment and training 
that is specific to Internet Crimes Against Children investigations. Thank you. Are there any other questions or discussion? Uh, Commissioner Luna? I do have a question. When you say it's going to go to equipment and training, um, is, is any of it going to go to prevention? Or what, what is the training about? So uh, within this uh, specific uh, specialty, within uh, Crimes Against Children Investigations, uh, the grant calls for the funds that have to be specifically used for training and equipment. This is uh, training for detectives to investigate the crimes, and it's equipment to help uh, the detectives do those investigations. So specific to your question about prevention, uh, I think the, the short answer is no because the grant is very specific. It has to train and equip the detectives who are doing the investigations. Okay, um, the motion is to recommend acceptance of this grant to the Board of Supervisors. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Abstentions? The ayes have it, motion passes. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you so much. <coughs> uh, so just as a, a point here, item six and seven, uh, they both concern the Operation Stone Garden grant. This was split into two items, so that one is about the um, equipment and one is about overtime and mileage. Item six is overtime and mileage. Um, do we have uh, someone who'd like to move that item? A second? Thank you, Tim. Uh, do we have a presentation? Uh, Sheriff Napier? Or... Oh, good morning. It's an uh, honor to be here and have the chance to uh, speak to the Operation Stone Garden Grant Program. Uh, before I begin remarks, I'd like to clarify the record. Um, the previous speaker said that we're at 80% staffing in the field. That's, that's incorrect. Our current staffing level is 92% of our sworn members. We're actively recruiting. It's just that we're simply having a hard time finding uh, qualified people to uh, become members of our department. We're not going to reduce our hiring standards to do that. Our current administrative staff is much thinner than when I took office in January of 2017. We've not increased our administrative staff. Uh, in fact, for a long time, almost two years, we operated the department with myself and two chiefs in order to save money. We're now back to a more sustainable level, so I think it's important to correct that record. Um, we have worked together over the last uh, year or so to try to clarify what the community's expectations are with respect to the Stone Garden Grant. And I think we've done some very good work in that regard. Uh, when I took office, we had no racial profiling policy. None. It did not exist. Uh, we were unaware of the community's expectation for transparency of what you wanted to know as far as data with respect to our activities in the Stone Garden Grant Program. We now have a much better grasp of those issues. And we've implemented systems to track and to better account for those uh, data points that you're concerned about. Uh, previously, we never even tracked how many times my department called Border Patrol. We now know, uh, since last March, that 85% of the time that we do call Border Patrol, it's at the request of a migrant that's lost or abandoned in the desert and requesting assistance. We have tried very hard to be responsive to the community concerns regarding Stone Garden Grant Program. A lot of this is new, and it's very easy to look in the rearview mirror and say that we could have or should have counted this or could have or should have done these things in the past but there was no community uh, interest in doing those things previously. So the department did not capture data that we should have been capturing. We did not engage in a level of transparency that perhaps we should have been. What we're looking at today is not what we've done in the past, which is not predictive in this case of what we'll do in the future. What we're doing today is deciding whether or not the department should, um, or rather this body should, recommend to the Board of Supervisors approval of this grant program. And that has got to be necessarily with a forward-looking focus, because that's about what the grant is about, is about future funding. And we have made a commitment to this body to work with you to be transparent, to count things that we've never counted. I'll give you just a few examples of what those things are. 
we had never previously counted because we were unaware of the community's concern about this. Those instances where we make a traffic stop that does not result in a, tra a citation, uh, those were not adequately tracked. Uh, we were not adequately tracking the differentiation between when we turn somebody over to Border Patrol as a proactive matter versus when we encounter migrants um, that surrender to us as a matter of wanting assistance. Those things are not the same things. We didn't count those in a, in a manner that uh, was quantifiable. Um, I want to be sure that the data that we provide to this body now and in the future is accurate, that it actually represents apples and apples county and oranges and oranges county so that we know what we're talking about. I have spoke with great conviction and passion about the, the efficacy and the value that I find in this body. Uh, when we were the Club C in the original composition, the purpose behind this body was to provide me as your sheriff with information and uh, community sentiment regarding departmental activities. We did good work in that capacity. We did. We were making great progress. And then we repurposed to be a grant reviewing body. What I would ask is that we recommend to the Board of Supervisors approval of this grant program with a forward focus, not looking in the rearview mirror, but looking at how Pima County can be better, more transparent, how we can work with the community to make this a more successful program, to allay community concerns. It's very easy to look backward and say we coulda, shoulda, woulda, but let's look forward. What I propose is that as we look forward with a forward focus to how we implement this funding, that we make a commitment to having monthly meetings in which I will appear before this board with statistical data that is relevant to the board, which is relevant to this body, about our previous month's activities. And as you make me aware that you need more data or that we need increased transparency, I will direct my staff to count those. Previously, the only things that were counted were those things that were on the DARs, which were driven by another body, not driven by us. That was driven by an outside entity. It was what they wanted to count. It's what they deemed to be important. And it was what they deemed to be quantifiable. Those are not the things that are concerning to Pima County. I'm now more aware than ever of what those things are. So I'm making a commitment to you that we will count those things and we'll become more transparent. There has been an opaque nature to this grant program in the past, and you're correct about that. And that is because for a decade, more than a decade, there had not been a community inquiry that in fact this grant program rode the consent agenda and was quietly approved year after year and for more than a decade. We can get caught up and mired down in, in little nuances of the grant program, such as whether we get 100% reimbursement for this and we can go into a bean counting mode with respect to this grant program that I think is displaced. Uh, one thing that we do know about this grant program is that we have obtained over the last 12 years $6 million of equipment as part of the Operation Stone Garden grant that has kept us safer, that has made my deputy safer, that has made me um, able to operate a more efficient department. And moving forward, we will in, um, enjoy the ability to have uh, additional equipment, which does offset some of the collateral cost. I've been in constant conversations with Washington, D.C. as a member of the Major County Sheriffs of America and the Arizona State Sheriffs Association. And there is movement in Washington, D.C. to understand that we do need to address some of these peripheral and collateral costs that are real. And some of those things are prosecutorial costs, uh, unreimbursed or not completely reimbursed personnel cost. We have Washington DC's ear on these things. Uh, but I urge you to understand that when we, re we um, refused the previous grant money, uh, that money uh, made a big lap. It went to FEMA in Washington DC and came all the way back to Arizona for reallocation. Um, $700,000 of the money that was to be distributed to Pima County was instead distributed to Pinal County to upfit their aircraft. That's money that should have resided here, and it should have been our equipment money, not Pinal County. Currently, Pinal County's aircraft that is funded by Operation Stone Garden in collaboration with the Border Patrol is flying missions in Pima County that has no transparency to any of you. Um, we don't know what they're doing. I know they're flying missions in our county, but I don't have a grasp of when, where, how, or what they're doing. We want transparency. I want transparency. We will not gain transparency by walking away. We'll simply abdicate that money to others, and we will have no sense of transparency. You'll have no sense of ability to guide our operations 
or to give us input into those things that concern you. If we are an Operation Stone Garden agency, you do have transparency and you do have a voice at the table in these meetings because we will be a Stone Garden participant. Right now, we don't have a voice at that table because we're not a participant agency. Rejecting this money, a recommendation of a rejection of this money does nothing, nothing positive for Pima County. It does not increase transparency. It does not ameliorate in any measurable way some practices, policies, and rhetoric out of Washington, D.C. that are troubling to members of our community. It does nothing to fix any of those things. It simply denies funding to the people of Pima County. And let me be perfectly clear. I believe in and I love the people that work for the Pima County Sheriff's Department. I do. I've been a law enforcement officer for a very, very long time. I've worked on four law enforcement agencies, and I've never had the pleasure, the honor of working with a more dedicated group of professionals than the men and women of the Pima County Sheriff's Department. My friends, we are better served. Our community is better served. The migrant community is better served. People of color are better served when our brave men and women of the Pima County Sheriff's Department are out there because they are our neighbors, they're our friends, they're our softball coach, they're members of our community. We do not want to misdirect this to have our funding go to others that are not members of our community, that we do not have the same level of confidence in that I do of the people of the Pima County Sheriff's Department. I am your sheriff, I'm an elected official. I have no desire nor designs to be a federal anything. This is my home. I've lived in this valley for 32 years. My family lives here. My granddaughter lives here. Long after I'm not the sheriff of this county, this is still my home, and I care deeply about what happens here. And I think those of you who know me, and several of you have known me for quite some long time, know where my heart is. It's very easy to find. It's on my sleeve. And some of the disagreements that we currently have are stirred up not because you don't know me or don't know what I care about in this community, but because of things that are happening thousands of miles from here, rhetoric and, and things that concern all of us. What I invite you to do is to move forward. Let's recommend approval of this Stone Garden grant to the Board of Supervisors and then hold me accountable as you should as an elected official and as your sheriff to maintaining that level of transparency that you care about, to documenting our activities, to amending our practices and policies in a manner that the community finds more agreeable. We now have a policy on the department that did not exist before, and that policy says that we will not ask immigration status of victims or witnesses of crime, that we will not ask immigration status of people on the school grounds, that we will not linger about or deploy our resources at Border Patrol tech stations. We have made progress. ICE representatives are no longer embedded in our jail. We still fully cooperate with our federal partners, we do. I have an affirmative and legal responsibility to do so. But I answer the community concern about the embedding of them in our detention facility. I have been responsive to the, to the needs of the community in a broad sense. So I invite you to do the right thing. I invite you to lay politics aside. I invite you to be at the table. I invite you to have your voice heard. Let's be better than the national landscape. Let's be better as Pima County and let's show that we can take something that is controversial, bring the community together, all different voices of our community. That's what activism is about, in my measure of estimation, is being heard and having all divergent views at the table to guide public policy, to guide your law enforcement officials, to make this a safer and better county for everyone. And that is my goal. I'm in the twilight of my career life, and that's for sure. And I care deeply about what happens, and moving us forward means a lot to me. And I think together, this body with the Sheriff's Department can move us forward. And with that, I'll conclude my remarks. I appreciate your indulgence in allowing me to speak. Um, I look forward to the prospect of working with this body to address community concerns, to increase transparency, and to move us forward. Let's approve the Operation Stone Garden grant because it is fundamentally the right thing to do for public safety. It's the right thing to do for the migrant community. And it's the right voice and the right message to send to the community in a broader sense that we can work together, not in opposition, not at one another's throats, but work together to make this a better county. Thank you.
Thank you, Sheriff Napier. Um, I'm sure there might be a, a few questions for Sheriff Napier. Um, I will ask uh, Commissioner Borazon first if he has any questions since he's remote. Commissioner Borazon? Okay. <laughs> um, did we have any uh, questions for Sheriff Napier? And I do believe, oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Uh, we can. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, do we have any, and I think there are a few other um, of your staff here who, who will be able to answer questions, but do we have questions for Sheriff Napier first? Uh, Commissioner Garcia, was that a yes? <laughs> The floor is yours. I will. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Sheriff Napier, you presented this morning that you've done all of these things that hadn't been provided before, that um, really you were unaware. Really, this community and the police forces in particular have lived through 1070, the build up to 1070, and, and all of that. So, I mean, they're aware. I, I do believe you're aware. Um, but what I want to ask you is you've indicated that, you know, that you're the sheriff for Pima County. And I want to ask you how many trips you've made to DC, to the border. Uh, how, how much of your work has gone, as this gentleman has indicated, to be part of the uh, U.S.-Mexico border team, uh, and, and so you've been colored by it. I, I heard you on the radio where they asked you about Trump's wall, and you said, oh, you just don't understand what he means. And you talked about a national security versus, you know, at least some police department said yeah, our, our problems are, you know, homelessness and, and that sort of thing, but you chimed in to a narrative that doesn't exist. We have six generations in my family here on this border, and what you've described is different. So I, I want you to answer those questions about how much of this really is the Border Patrol mission, and they're dangling monies that we all want, but they're dangling monies for a Border Patrol mission, which it states right here, Stone Garden funds and the purpose is to support CBP's border security mission. Uh, Commissioner Garcia, I think I understand there's a very uh, complex question. Uh, I think part of it was um, the trips that I make to Washington, D.C. I, I don't have that exact number off the top of my head. I would say in the last two years I've been in Washington, D.C. five times. Um, to Mexico and all the border regions for tri uh, Trump's uh, uh, visits? Well, I've been to the border multiple times. Uh, the last time that I was on the border, well, obviously it was this past Friday, but the time before that was to take ABC News down to the border uh, by uh, Sassabi to increase public awareness of the fact that we have um, an issue uh, with uh, migrants crossing in that area. And it's evidenced by um, the fact that there, in places there are no barriers um, at all. Um, the the reason that I do those things is because I feel it important to not abdicate the voice of Pima County to others. Um, because as I travel about, there are voices that are um, definitely incongruent with what I believe to be the sentiment of this community. Now, um, Commissioner Garcia, you and I may disagree, but we've known each other for a good long while. And we may disagree about certain things, but I think the voice of Pima County in general needs to be heard because otherwise we abdicate that voice to others. So if you pay attention to what I've said in the past, I speak passionately about the humanitarian plight of undocumented persons, I do. And the fact that too many of them are being victimized criminally, uh, sexually, and as a result of the environment. Uh, testament to that fact is that we recover bodies frequently in the deserts of Pima County that we don't know what happened to those people. 
And there are many facets, and we could probably speak for a good long while about the many facets of humanitarian crisis with respect to the border issue. Some of that, you will correctly point out, happens after they get here because the system is collapsed. It cannot adequately take care of the family units and it's doing a poor job of doing that. I don't fault the federal government for that so much as I fault the situation. Uh, so I speak very passionately about the uh, humanitarian crisis because I'm a Christian person. I'm a humanitarian. It kind of comes with, the, with my line of work. And, and Operation Stone Garden does not further uh, help uh, we have many, inst I know you have instances of humanitarian aid and I'm really uh, grateful for that, but we also have many cases where we've called in and the sheriff goes to Borstar and it just goes nowhere. So we know that if you're a tourist from Germany, you get a different treatment than if it's a, a lost migrant in the desert because we have these cases. In fact, one of our organizations is finalizing a report uh, on this situation. So Stone Garden is not, please don't present it as a humanitarian uh, aid grant. Uh, Commissioner Garcia, I guess we will have to agree to disagree in part on that because we call Borstar not because we aspire to have these people deported, but we aspire to have the most uh, readily available rescue platform in that region uh, to rescue these people. I would be remiss if I did not do so. Uh, so when, when a migrant calls in distress in the desert, we provide them the same thing that I would provide a German tourist who was lost in the desert. We would call that same asset because they're the most uh, uh, available asset in that region. If you have specific examples, and I've invited this body to do that, if you've got specific examples that I could follow up on, not anecdotal ones, but specific examples, I'll follow up on those and I'll give you a report on those. The other thing that we, we need to talk about is the public safety crisis. The, the incidence of opiates and, and what is less talked about is methamphetamine coming up from the border. Uh, part of this is the ability to interdict those things. I believe that we're better served when we're the presence of our local law enforcement, not Border Patrol, but our local law enforcement, who I spoke highly of and I continue to hold dear to my heart, are out there in greater volume and greater um, visibility. And Stone Garden allows me to do that to the tune of about a million dollars in overtime a year. It allows me to deploy those resources, our resources, in that region that we otherwise would not be able to. I have another question, but I'll let somebody oh. else. No, no, no. I, I'll, I'll go last. Uh, Commissioner Garcia, did you have another question? Um, and then I also ask if other commissioners have questions, and then I have three short ones um, for the sheriff. Any other questions for Sheriff Napier? Oh, uh, Commissioner Luna, please. And then um, Commissioner uh, Serrato. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and you just said uh, that you're a humanitarian, and, and I want to thank you for, for saying that. Um, I do appreciate uh, you being uh, honest about um, what you value uh, as a sheriff. Uh, but I do have a question uh, regarding uh, your treatment of victims of crime. What is your current policy on signing uh, victim certifications for a U visa? Uh, these would be people who are documented and have been victims of a crime that the Pima County Sheriff investigated. And your office does receive requests uh, for certifications that these people were victims and were uh, cooperative uh, with the investigation. What is your current policy? And now I don't, I'm not asking you about your past policy mm -hmm. because your past policy has been to deny uh, most of them. So I, I would love to, to know what your current policy is on that. Well, um, thank you for the question, Commissioner Luna. The, um, those do not come to, to my level, so I can't speak to the volume of which, because I don't touch those. But what I will say is I, I agree philosophically that when somebody comes to uh, law enforcement as a victim of a crime, they need protections without respect to immigration status because that serves a broader public safety and criminal justice purpose. And we would be remiss if we had people that would become, as we have worry about in law enforcement, this secondary classification of victims victims that are unwilling or unable to solicit the, um, the support and um, protections of law enforcement. And that's why our current policy, which none, none of the prior Democrat sheriffs had implemented such a policy, says specifically that we will not ask immigration status of someone who's a victim or witness of crime unless immigration status is somehow an element of the crime that we're investigating. So we have made some movement in that. And um, 
I think it uh, peculiar that as a Republican sheriff, we worked uh, very hard with the ACLU and the community group to craft our racial profiling policy. I think that's testament to our outreach into the community to really better understand the community concerns. So I would support, that was a long answer, I apologize, um, but I would support the um, protections of those people coming forward that need to be part of the prosecutorial process um, as part of the dispensation of criminal justice and as victims. Um, and, and that would include people who were cooperative in the past, not, not those coming forward from today uh, or? Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware that we have uh, denied in the past, uh, but if we have, uh, bring those incidents to my attention and we'll, we'll look at those. But I, what I need from all of you, please, is specific examples. Um, very, the more specificity that you provide me, the better my response can be to you. Um, because I would rather be very precise in my response than to gloss over something because I don't have enough information to intelligently respond. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Serrato, you had a question for Sheriff Napier. Um, yes, I have two questions. We often see the 9,189 square miles and 125 miles of border to describe the area that your deputies patrol. Um, and per uh, Huckleberry's um, memo from some months back, it looks like when you actually break that down, you're actually only patrolling about 4% of that area. At least that's what you're responsible for. Um, which is about 367 square miles. Would you say that that's accurate? Uh, absolutely not. Um, okay. That is a county administrator um, parsing language and preciseness that is um, incongruent with the dispensation of law enforcement activities. That would argue that we have no um, responsibility for the borders of Tucson that border Pima County. Um, it, they, these things transcend those imaginary political lines to come into our community. So whilst it is true, intellectually true, that that small portion resides as part of Pima County, it does not negate the fact that that rest of that area that might be state trust land or federal lands or other lands does not have a public safety impact that I'm responsible for. Uh, for example, if we interdict uh, methamphetamine we don't say, well, did you come up from this part of the border or that part of the border because we're trying to decide whether it's our responsibility or not. Uh, no, I, I have fundamental responsibility for public safety in all 9,200 square miles of this county. Okay, and another question. Um, from my understanding, any equipment that is bought with grant money must only be used during Operation Stone Garden hours for Operation Stone Garden related um, operations. Is this also correct? This is also false. Um, okay. The grant does not say that. The grant says that um, equipment purchased with Operation Stone Garden funding must be used to support Operation Stone Garden activity. That is true. But there is no prohibition in the grant language against using it for other times. And I'll give you an example. The hoist on our um, helicopter uh, was purchased with Operation Stone Garden funding. Um, no one would expect us to fly over people, uh, you know, about to drown in an arroyo somewhere and say, sorry, we cannot rescue you because this is a stone garden hoist. Um, no, that's not true. Uh, we are required to use that equipment in support of the Operation Stone Garden activities, but not prohibited from using it for other purposes. So the grant language um, says we shall use it for purposes of stone garden, but does not prohibit us to use it for other things. And we have, for the last 12 years, used it for other things as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Garcia. Yes, a couple of questions. Um, in uh, part of your agency responsibilities, in addition to that you have to support CBP's border security mission, it also says that you in engage in border interdiction operations, as you know, and they consist of reasonable suspicion stops of potential undocumented aliens, which I hate that word, I think we should come up to, you know. It's federal language. It's ridiculous, but reasonable suspicion. So your agents are involved, your officers are involved in that. I'd like for you to address that, because uh, that's really problematic. I mean, that's the problem. That's a problem with 1070, that's the problem with 
all the racist underpinnings of all these laws. But in addition to that, so I don't have to talk again, it relates to what uh, Commissioner uh, Zaida asked you about, um, because I know these equipments can be used for everything. That's part of the whole of government. If you would tell everybody what, how this fits into the whole of government concept that the Border Patrol has, that even the Border Patrol chief uh, in the summer admitted that and pushed us, said, hey, this is a whole of government issue. We all governmental agencies have to address that. Okay, we did a two-part question, Commissioner Garcia. The first part is the reasonable suspicion thing. What we need to do moving forward is to have a better handle, because I know intuitively that it's very infrequent that my deputies stop somebody under the conditions in which you just articulated. But we can't quantify that because we haven't counted it before. Uh, moving forward, you have my uh, affirmation before this board that I'll work with you to quantify those things so we know the degree to which those things happen, not anecdotally, but quantifiably. Um, and I think that's important because After there's... After it happens? Pardon me? After the damage happens? That's what you want us to do? To well, let the, you know when, when things happen? Well, we don't, we don't count those things right now. I know that it's very, very infrequent because we have to some degree and, and somewhat ineptly counted these things in the past, but what I want to do is to better do that because now we understand that that is a community concern. Um, I don't think we'll ever be in a complete agreement, Commissioner Garcia, and I understand that. The important thing is that we have this dialogue. That's the important thing. The second part of your question was uh, regarding the equipment. In this current grant, one of the things that's in our request is a flare system, which allows our aircraft to see at night. Now that will be used in support of Operation Stone Garden activities, no question about that. But that also allows us to do a tremendous amount of public safety good for the people of this county. Yeah, it, it sure does. One of those ways that it does that is by allowing us to not have to pursue vehicles that are fleeing from us. So ground units no longer have to be in active pursuit of a vehicle once our aircraft has a fix on that orbiting many thousand feet above that, unknown to the person fleeing, our ground units can go away from that person. And we can wait till that person drives around for a half an hour and parks in their driveway and then interdict them there without in, uh, causing jeopardy to public safety. It also allows us to, to track missing persons and do other public safety goods. So there's a lot of things that will be beneficial to the people of Pima County as a result of our ability to buy that equipment with not taxpayer funds in Pima County, which I'll have to do because ours has reached the end of its service life. I'll have to buy it with some money. But with federal government money, it allows me not to put that burden on the taxpayers of Pima County. And we'll still have use of that equipment. But that's not my question. My question is about this whole of government. Yes, I mean, I understand that. We have limited money here. And so we're asking the feds to fulfill what Pima County should fulfill. That's what we're saying, right? Because we don't have enough money, so let's use this, what I believe is dirty money, you know, uh, this Operation Stone Garden money. But I want you to address how we fit into the whole of government concept under Department of Homeland Security. Um, Commissioner Garcia, I'll have to claim ignorance. I'm not sure how you categorize the whole of government. Um, I'm not sure how you're using that term. Um, it seems to be disparate in your estimation that the whole of government concept is, is somehow disparate. Um, so I'm not really sure how you're using that, so I, I can't respond okay. intelligently. Well, I, I think you need to ask the Border Patrol uh, about that. Uh, it was um, Karish was the last one. I forgot who the new one is. But he specifically talks about it, and this is very specific. You've got four agency responsibilities, and they're listed here. And and uh, we talk about using these funds for the good of Pima County, right? And so that makes us all feel good because, oh my goodness, we don't. But it's all part of this whole of government to do what? To support the border security mission. And I think it's imperative that you know that. That well, this is part of a federal um, uh, effort to, you know, to get collaboration all along uh, the border, and it's very dangerous to our communities. Well, Commissioner Garcia, for uh, I've been in law enforcement in the, in the Valley for 30 years here. Um, local law enforcement has always, as a public safety necessity, collaborated with our federal partners, and I don't see that ever changing. 
Our proximity to the international border brings with it public safety and humanitarian issues that local law enforcement will always necessarily have to collaborate in some manner with our federal law enforcement partners. Not only um, do they have more resources than we do, I have roughly 500 uh, sworn officers, and Border That's Patrol has 4,000. That's our point here is that the federal government should be doing its own job here, not us. And we should not be collaborating with this federal mission here. I mean, let me tell you, we have, we've had over almost 3,300 deaths along the Arizona-Sonoda border. That's what we've had. And it's been security measures that have driven this death. Not traffickers, not anything. And it's a humanitarian aid organizations that are addressing this issue. I, I'm sorry, uh, I, I, well, I, I just, don't, I'm sorry. if you want to follow just up and, then, and then I'll ask my questions. Thank you, Commissioner Garcia and Sheriff Napier. Um, Commissioner Garcia, I don't know that we're better served by turning that over to 100% of the federal government. I think we're better served when your local elected law enforcement person is interjected into that environment so your voice is heard. Um, I think your voice is better heard through me as an elected official, and we're better served when our people, our neighbors, our friends, that being my deputies, are in that environment. I, I, I just, uh, we philosophically disagree about that. Um, I think we're better served when the people of the Pima County Sheriff's Department are involved. So I, I, we will uh, disagree on that element, I'm sure. Commissioner Heaney, you have a question for yes. Sheriff Napier. Yes, uh, Sheriff Napier, thank you for being here this morning and your thank comments. You. Um, I wanted to just do a quick follow-up. If you could quantify for us, sir, the approximate number of uh, calls for service we get to assist uh, sick or injured people out in the desert on an annual basis, your department, and unfortunately, how many calls do we get to remove deceased bodies a year? And the second part of that question is, if the board is unable to approve Stone Garden, will that change? Um, Commissioner Haney, that's a, I, I don't have the exact number, but I do have a percentage um, because we never tracked this before because, again, we're increasing our community awareness here that starting in March of last year, we began tracking the number of times and the percentage of times that our department calls Border Patrol for assistance. And we know that 85% of that time, um, it is at the bequest of a migrant who's lost in the desert and requesting assistance. Uh, we did not know that before, so the exact number I don't have off the top of my head, but it is 85% of the time. It is a very, very small percentage of the time that we call Border Patrol at the bequest of a deputy that has stopped somebody proactively with the suspicion of an immigration violation. That is a very rare occurrence. Um, and I can quantify those numbers to the board because we are tracking those now. Um, and the second part of your question? Well, basically, will, will things change if if Stone Garden is not approved, will you will you do will you, will you not be able to provide the current level of service that you're providing if Stone Garden is not approved? Yes, uh, Commissioner Haney, we will not be able to provide the same level of service because I will not have uh, close to one million dollars of overtime funding to deploy our deputies into our community to address these concerns. So no, we will be fundamentally handicapped in our ability to proactively be out in that environment to address these things. So yes, the absence of Operation Stone Garden does adversely impact not only public safety, but what we purport to care about, which is the plight of the undocumented. I believe that we're better served if our deputies are out there. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, Commissioner Serrato, please. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask mine last. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, just, so, um, Sheriff, you keep discussing further um, working with the community in the future and having us be at the table and keeping you accountable and having these conversations continue to happen. What reassurances do you have from Supervisor Steve Christie and Miller who pulled the very first public stunt by pulling, uh, he pulled his uh, commissioners out of this commission so that we actually couldn't do our job and has continuously called us all sorts of terrible things in public during his meeting. So if by any chance this gets approved, what do you have any reassurances that we'll even continue to have a forum after this? I mean, he brought them back for this vote particularly. So we're, you know, how can we have community dialogue when we have two of our supervisors pulling uh, 
public stunts like this? Do you have any re reassurances from them? Uh, Commissioner, I, I'm responsible for being the sheriff of Pima County. The uh, supervisors are responsible for being supervisors. They're your elected officials in that capacity. Um, what I have given you is my affirmation that if we move forward with Stone Garden, I, independent of the Board of Supervisors, want this body to continue to exist because I find value in you. Even when we disagree, as I, I know I always will probably disagree to some measure with uh, Commissioner Garcia and, and many of you. That disagreement should not be threatening any of us. So you have my um, support in the um, continuance of this body at my direction as the sheriff of this county that you will have input with me, independent of any other political influences. We will sit down once a month. We will decide what we want to count. What, what, what is transparency? We'll define what transparency means to us. And then I will provide you with information that assures you that we have that level of transparency, but that will be independent of other political influence because that's my execution of the duties of my elected office, independent of the actions of other elected officials. I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, but you would agree that the commission would be at stake because this commission, this body itself, may be once again uh, disabled by our uh, supervisors. So this would not be a guarantee that we would have this place to discuss. No, um, my, I live my life looking out the windshield, not in the rearview mirror. Out the windshield, what I see is this body taking a deep breath, um, laying politics aside and some other concerns, recommending to the Board of Supervisors approval of this grant, and then you have my um, affirmation that I then will reconstruct this body, that we will have a manageable number of, of commissioners, that you will have direct interaction with me on a monthly basis to discuss these concerns. And no Board of Supervisors member or other political influence will um, interrupt that because that will be at my direction independent of all the other political influences. We, meaning the sheriff and this body, however it's comprised at that point, will work together to address these concerns. You have my, my affirmation on that, that fact. Because I do find value in this. Sometimes I feel like a pinata, but that's okay. That's fine. Um, and I don't mind that. Um, because I think in, in that dialogue, good things have come to us. And I don't want us to, and to your point, I don't want us to give this up. We're moving forward. We're doing positive work here. Why would we want to not do that? Uh, let's not give up on this. It's too important. Commissioner Rodriguez. Thank you. Um, so, um, thank you for providing all the data in regards to Operation Stone Garden. Um, to look further into this, we didn't see the entire operations from the Sheriff's Department, and actually when we have seen Operation Stone Garden um, done in other counties or other departments, we get to see the numbers so we can compare how much of that percentage um, does have an impact on the department. So if, um, if that could be um, taken into consideration, if we're going to see this every year, I would like to see the, um, or is something that you can provide maybe in the next, for us to see the next meeting, that would be great. Um, but just to compare the number of operations. Um, well, Commissioner Rodriguez, to that point, um, what I, I aspire for us to do is to move Stone Garden forward and then you tell me what data points you want us to count. And we're going to have to count those independent of the DARs. The DARs are going to be separate from what we count locally in my way of providing transparency to this body. So if we decide that we want to count a certain thing, I will instruct my deputies to count that in a way that I'm sure that that is exactly what's being counted. And then as I previously stated, we'll come together each month. Let's not wait for an annual report, that's too long. Let's um, come together each month and, and report on these things. Thank you. Um, you do have, you have provided six months from last year. Um, that's, um, that should be used to collect, at least to compare from last year, not necessarily with the future grants. Um, is this, I have multiple questions, so I would prefer to have just the answer and not personal statements or political statements, and I'll appreciate that from you. Okay. Uh, is the sheriff operating under 2019 Stone Garden grant 
and if so, since when? And the reason why I ask is because 2018, when uh, the, share, the Board of Supervisors said that they were going to over, uh, over view it before uh, approving it, you still operate it. So I just want to clarify if you are operating <coughs> under 2019 operations down guarded at the moment. Uh, the short answer is no. Thank you. Um, under what circumstances we will see the sheriff's, uh, we will see the sheriff's department and CBP collaboration. Uh, I'm sorry to say that. Can you me. can you tell us under what circumstances are we going to see the sheriff's department in collaboration with CBP? In those instances where public safety in Pima County and um, our operations with those uh, federal officials intersect. Can you define those? Uh, there could be a good many of uh, those times. Um, so I can't give you a broad brush definition of when all those would be. Um, we interact with our federal partners on a broad array of law enforcement uh, activities, the rescue of migrants being one of those things. Um, often, um, because there's such a, a presence of uh, uh, Border Patrol agents in the western part of our county, they will think they'll interact with us on things like they witness drunk drivers, any number of things. So there are a whole number of things that we would interact with them on. Um, I don't think there will be any fundamental difference from that, uh, from the manner in which we've interacted with them for uh, the last several decades. Thank you. Can you define <laughs> under what circumstances is the sheriff's department? Um, assisting during a traffic stop, an illegal traffic stop, and contributing to the detention of families. We never conduct illegal traffic stops. If you have an example of one, uh, bring that to me and I'll address that. Okay. Um, the reason I ask, and I would like to hear the answer, or what's your procedure in this case, but we got to see an illegal stop done by DPS that resulted in a call to Border Patrol then we had you DPS show up. Um, you're referring to the stop about a week ago? March, 20, March 19, 2019. Okay. Um, I can speak to that because that's a specific example. Uh, my deputy responded because a federal law enforcement officer was requesting assistance, not to facilitate any of the federal law enforcement activity. That's the same manner in which uh, Chief Magnus um, said that his personnel responded as well. It was at the bequest of a federal law enforcement officer requesting assistance not to facilitate or augment the execution of that federal law enforcement officer's activity. Just for clarification, TPD officers were standing at the corner of 9th and 22nd. Your officers came into the streets and actually helped detain the family. Do you know those details? Was what our report provided, our case provided? My understanding is that my, my deputy, I think there was only a deputy there, um, was there to ensure the safety of a federal law enforcement officer, which we will do 100% of the time. So f safety of federal agents comes first before constituents of Pima County? We will always, um, and I'll be unapologetic on this, we will always um, work to protect uh, federal law enforcement officers. I cannot imagine a condition under which this commission would suggest that we would do otherwise. Um, so when they request um, assistance from us, we have an affirmative responsibility to respond to that, and we will. Thank you. Under what circumstances are we going to see Border Patrol and Sheriff deputies hanging out together? <laughs> Define hanging out. I, I, don't, I don't know what you mean by hanging out. Um, um, let's say a uh, uh, sheriff's vehicle with a border patrol vehicle next to each other. There could be a number of reasons why that would occur. Uh, the transfer of intelligence information about potential drug trafficking or human trafficking in the area. Uh, they could simply be talking about the uh, national championship basketball game tonight. Uh, there's a number of reasons why. Um, two people might stop and talk to one another. Um, I certainly would never try to prohibit that um, interaction uh, because the sharing of intelligence information has a criminal justice nexus to it um, that is important. So um, the idea of hanging out or, or casual conversations is not something that uh, concerns me a great deal. And then for the purpose of 
um, being efficient and strategic with the money that is being invested, how many do you think that you can give us a number or a number of times that this will happen up under Operation Stone Garden? That people have what now? That we are going to see just sheriffs uh, hanging out with CBP talking about a basketball championship under Operation Stone Garden. Well, the basketball championship is tonight, so I assume that tomorrow there wouldn't be a lot of discussion about that. But no, we will um, always interact with our federal partners. We have to exchange intelligence information um, and operational information, if for no other reason than public safety reasons, but also because in that environment, there are a lot of federal agents running around out there, and my deputies are running out there. From an officer safety standpoint, the right hand has to know what the left hand is doing. Um, so we will always have to interact with them. Even if you reject Stone Garden and we get no Stone Garden funding, nothing about that will change. We'll still have to interact with them for public safety reasons and officer safety reasons. That just will never change. So rejection of this will not ameliorate that concern. All right, thank you. And um, as a person heading the Sheriff's Department, are you collating the data when we see the presence of CVP hanging out with the Sheriff Department, with the Sheriff officers? If this body were moving forward, if this body somehow would like me to somehow quantify, first we'd have to define what hanging out means, and then we could quantify that, and that is what you deem to be part of the transparency picture moving forward. Let's recommend approval of the grant, and if there's a way that I can count that, bring it to the board, I will. All right, thank you. And then another question, and it's um, in regards to more data that you submitted. Um, from the people that were actually taken into custody, and uh, that resulted in taken into custody, um, um, how many of us, or what's the percentage, um, two pieces to that. For how long do you detain people in your jails when they result on a sheriff traffic stop and CBP gets called, the sheriff, I'm assuming the sheriff definitely takes it to the jail and then they're taken into custody, arrested, they serve time. Um, what's the average time that a person who's waiting in there um, before it's released is, and then how long do they stay when there is a, you said that ICE is no longer in the jail? They no longer have office space in my jail now. Okay, so for how long do you keep them in jail if they have been flagged by CBP? Um, and then why are the transfer rates on that? Because we don't see that here, and that contributes to the pipeline of criminalization, detention, and deportation of folks. So all of that's connected with the feral agents. Okay, those are good questions. First of all, uh, the Sheriff's Department does not decide in any manner when someone is released. That's part of the prosecutorial process. We don't arbitrarily decide someone should be released and someone shouldn't. That comes from the court. So that would vary widely on a multitude of factors of how long somebody might be detained in the jail. But we, meaning the Sheriff's Department, have nothing to say about that. Your second question was in respect to ICE detainers. Now, contrary to popular belief, we have very, very few people of the 1,900 people in our jail that have ICE detainers. Generally, it is about 2% of the population, somewhere around 40 or 50 people have ICE detainers. The vast majority of those people um, I would say 85 to 90 percent are on in jail on felony charges and they will not be released so the ICE detainer is a moot point. The, the final part of your question is how long do we detain somebody based on an ICE detainer? Based on solely the existence of an ICE detainer, is that your question? Correct, so somebody does have a record or has been accused of a crime, how long do you keep them in custody? Okay, that's a little different than what you just said, okay. but I think I understand what you're getting at. Um, we do not decide how long somebody remains in custody. We will not detain somebody, and let me be clear on this. An ICE detainer has no force and legal effect for me to detain somebody one minute past the state or the county's criminal justice need to detain that person. So we don't detain anybody any length of time based on an ICE detainer, period. Uh, we do not, I don't have the legal authority to do so. An ICE detainer is not a binding legal document that provides me in the advice of my legal counsel and of the National Sheriff's Association, also the Major County Sheriff's Association, does not allow me the legal ability to detain somebody based on an ICE detainer. Some sheriffs are finding ways around that. We are not. Okay. Um, 
So in case that I got stopped by an officer and I was taken into custody because I'm undocumented, um, and I go inside your jail, I see the judge, they tell me I have a bond for $1,000, my family pays the bond for $1,000, but now it's been flagged that I'm undocumented, what happens? That would depend on whether or not um, ICE has put a detainer on you or not. Um, assuming there's no ICE detainer, you're released. Because right. we have no criminal justice reason in Pima County to uh, maintain custody of you anymore. Again, that's a decision made by the court, not by yeah. the sheriff. Um, okay. Um, so how does the ICE detainer come through? How, how you know which one is in and which one is not? The, um, we transfer information, uh, as we're required to, to ICE, and then they transfer back to us um, a detainer. And again, this is very infrequent. I think there are 40, maybe 40 or 45 out of 1,900 people in the jail. So this is not a frequent occurrence. I know people think it is. I go back east and talk to sheriffs, and they assume that 95% of my jail must be undocumented persons, and that's simply false. Um, there's only about 5% of the population of our jail at any given time are people that are not U.S. citizens, and that could be people from any number of countries. So the idea that the jail is, is overrun with people um, that are not here with proper documentation simply false. No, that's not true. Um, so it, the ICE official will convey to us a detainer uh, when Pima County no longer has a criminal justice reason to hold this person, we notify ICE that this person will be released. It's up to ICE to uh, then come to the jail and take custody of that person if that's their desire. Okay. Two more and then I'll be done. Okay. Um, is that part of the 280CVG contract for you to transfer information to ICE? The 283G? I'm 287G. Not, no, I've been very clear on that point. Uh, mm -hmm. We are not a 287G department. Um, what 287G does is cross-certify my deputies Im as immigration officers. And that would allow them to honor an ICE detainer as an immigration enforcement personnel. Mm -hmm. I have made perfectly clear. I think that's bad public policy, and my deputies will never be cross-certified as immigration officers under the 287G program. Okay. And is there a specific grant that you use um, to um, collaborate in this case, with, in a specific case, with ICE? Um, to transfer information or share information? It, or it's done electronically, and I, I, I believe there's a legal requirement for that, and the statute escapes me right now, but I, I do know there is a legal requirement that we transfer information to uh, federal law enforcement. We, we comply with that law. And what the federal government does, the federal law enforcement officials do with respect to the issuance of an ICE detainer is a question better addressed to them, uh, not to me, uh, because that's their process. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Luna. Two more. Um, you just said that uh, the rejection of Stone Garden it would not change collaboration with um, federal law enforcement. So I just have a couple questions. If uh, Stone Garden is rejected, uh, are you planning to continue calling the Border Patrol for Board Star? Absolutely. Okay. Because I, I don't want anybody to perish in the, in the deserts of our county because we, out of some displaced uh, sense of political correctness, failed to deploy the resource needed to save somebody's life. So no, I, as a humanitarian, I can't, I can't do that. Um, are you planning to continue uh, interdiction, interdiction operations with federal law enforcement agencies? Absolutely. I have affirmative responsibility that is unwavering and I will not yield on. My commitment is to public safety in Pima County. I will not yield on that. We will always have to collaborate, collaborate with our federal partners for intelligence, information sharing, and to interdict very dangerous drugs and human and sex traffickers coming through our county. And as your law enforcement elected official, I have an affirmative responsibility to do that, and I will not abdicate that. Okay. And last question. Uh, if Borstar is rejected, what changes do you plan to make to the budget, if any? Well, first of all, I have to ask for equipment uh, funded by the General Fund of Pima County that um, the federal government is quite literally begging me to take. Uh, I think that's unfortunate. Um, I will still be responsible for the effective deployment of human resources into the operational environment out there to interdict um, drugs and, and human traffickers. 
Um, just a month ago, my deputies, um, because they are deployed right now doing those things, interdicted 13,000 fentanyl pills. I assume that no one on this commission wants us to not do that. Uh, 13,000 fentanyl pills, the collateral societal damage done by that injection of drugs into the community, not, not only our community, but nationally. We had 70,000 drug-related deaths in, in the United States. It transcended auto, auto accidents. We never believed this. That's why, in response to community concerns, we now deploy Narcan. Okay, I do listen. I do pay attention to these things. Um, we just interdicted a couple of days ago 58 pounds of methamphetamine. If you go back 10 years ago, if we did two ounces, it was considered a big bust. Now it's 58 pounds. I think the people of this county want my people out there doing this. So we're going to be doing it. Now whether it's funded by federal dollars or local dollars, I'm not going to yield on my responsibility to keep this community safe. I don't want those drugs in our community, and I don't want those drugs going through our community to do harm all across our nation. Uh, the, the public health emergency associated with the drug crisis right now is pronounced. Too many people are dying. Too many people are suffering the scourge of a lifetime addiction. I, I've spoken to community groups about this, and just pause to think about this for just a second. All over Pima County right now, little children are going to school. And they're learning their ABCs and their one, two, threes. Not one of those children, not one, is daydreaming about coming addicted to drugs. Not one. This is a very complex issue, and we're going to be on the forefront of it as long as I'm your sheriff. Okay. So your answer is you would be asking the county for funds, correct? Yeah, I'm sorry. That was an incredibly verbose answer. I, I do have a little passion for this. I'm sorry, but yes. Commissioner Rainey. I just had two very quick questions. Um, the first uh, was regarding if CLEPSI was disbanded and you created your own um, commission. Can you please clarify what the criteria of the, the people and community that you would be inviting to participate in this commission? Well, I hope that that's a great question, Commissioner Rainey. What I would hope is that what we would do is take the elements of the current commission and you would decide. It shouldn't be directed by me. I shouldn't be appointing people. It should be the community that appoints people. And I have a, a, a great confidence in, in the chair, um, despite disagreement uh, with Commissioner Garcia. I think you all can decide to me what the composition. The only thing I would ask is let's not make it unwieldy. Let's not make it 30 or 40 people, because that becomes unwieldy. Let's keep it a manageable number, but that should be driven by you. Um, on who you think best represents the broad interest of the community. Okay, thank you. Um, and my last question was, um, you've spoken quite, quite a bit about humanitarian aid provided by the Sheriff's Department, and I was hoping that you could specify the specific activities when you say humanitarian aid. How, is, how specifically is the Sheriff's Department providing humanitarian aid to those in the desert? Um, well, I'll give you an example of just uh, uh, several months ago, one of my assistant chiefs was traveling out Ajo Highway with um, CB, CBS News in there. And someone came out of the desert and flagged the police car down and uh, was obvious distress saying, Agua, Agua. Um, this happens very frequently. Um, we know that the high percentage of calls coming into communications that we subsequently call for assistance are at the bequest of migrants. So it's a very frequent occurrence. I don't, ha I apologize, I don't have the number off the top of my head. Um, I think, I talked to the new Border Patrol chief a week or so ago, his name's uh, Chief Virel. I think they've done 172 rescues uh, since the first of the year. Um, that's rescue events, not number of people. Yes, sorry, and I want I'm, I'm not so specifically um, asking about the number. I'm asking about the specific activities. What does it look like? Is it simply picking people up? Is it calling EMTs? What specific humanitarian aid activities do they participate in when they're rescuing people? Um, oftentimes it's at the um, a migrant surrendering because they're, they've been uh, dropped off by traffickers somewhere in the desert and they're in distress because they don't have adequate water. So a lot of times that comes to us um, directly. So um, it, it, it really uh, runs the whole gambit of, of activities. Um, I cannot give you a boilerplate, but that's another thing as we move forward. If you'd like me to parse that data down 
to be more specific, we can do that, where I could say, okay, there are five conditions under which we provide humanitarian aid. How many times did we do those five things? But again, that's something that this body could help me better define. Okay, I just, um, I specifically just wanted, I think humanitarian, humanitarian aid is a very broad term and you utilize that. And so I just wanted us to be as specific as possible as to what that means, because I think it can encompass from anything from giving water to people all the way to actually driving folks to um, hospitals, providing all sorts of other aid. And so I just wanted to clarify what that broad term meant when you said that the Sheriff's Department provides humanitarian aid. And that's it. Thank you yeah, so much. It, it could be a great number of things. The one thing I, I do uh, support is uh, Humane Borders. Uh, have a good relationship with them. And one of the things that they've asked me to do, which is kind of a two-edged sword, is to uh, allow my deputies to better monitor uh, the water stations that they have deployed in the desert because unfortunately they're subject to a lot of vandalism and um, and are degraded often and I do support uh, fully uh, humane borders attempt to put water stations in the desert to um, ensure that these people don't die as a result of environmental exposure okay if there are no more questions for Sheriff Napier you must uh, take my oh <laughs> Commissioner Serrano um, Sheriff, are you aware that at this moment in Santa Cruz County, the sheriff had to park, I think, two vehicles that he bought with Operation Stone Garden money? He was audited by the Arizona, uh, I have the name, by the Arizona State Auditor. Um, so he or the sheriff there can only use these vehicles when his department is, operate, is, is collaborating with Border Patrol. Are you aware of that? Um, I have uh, discussed that with uh, Sheriff Estrada, and he would be in a much better position than I to explain the full dynamics behind that. But the underlying problem there was that he had received uh, money, and Sheriff Estrada is in a, in a very precarious <laughs> position with respect to his budget. And um, I probably would leave it at that. I think he's better able to speak to why those vehicles need to be parked. But I would say they were not being used at all for Stone Garden, and they had several hundred thousand miles on them. And the officials cried foul on that because it, they, it was, in effect, somewhat supplanting. But again, Sheriff Estrada is in a better position to answer that than I am. So because of that, we can then assume that any equipment that's bought by Oper Operation Stone Garden uh, funds has to have a has to be used for Stone Garden and for assisting in Border Patrol at least to some reasonable um, uh, what's the word I'm looking percentage for yeah degree, you're 100 percent right? right yes um, that we would we be obligated if we take equipment funded by Operation Stone Garden mm -hmm. to at least be able to illustrate some usage of that equipment in support of the Operation Stone Garden mission. That's why they provide us the money. But it does not in any way preclude us from using that equipment for other purposes. But in the future, if anything like this were to happen in Pima County, then theoretically anything that's been bought by Stone Garden could then be parked or not used. Um, can be forced. You can be forced to not use those unless you're using them with Border Patrol because that's what's happened here. Well, one of the problems with the rejection of Operation Stone Garden funding is the federal government could come back to me and say, if you're not going to be part of Operation Stone Garden, we would like our $6 million in equipment back that we've given you over the last 12 years. Uh, that would be devastating. Um, right now, I have a good relationship with my federal partners, and I've asked them to not do that because we still are a uh, strategic partner with them, even if we aren't in Stone Garden. But that's a precarious position. Um, because there's some of the uh, equipment on our aircraft that I honestly I could not take off and return to them and we could end up writing a very big check. So then that goes back to the, uh, the question or the notion that this grant is an investment in our community, in our future, in our public safety if at any point the federal government can come back and say if you're not using it to help us fully or you're not using it enough, they can take it right back. So we're, is that correct? So 
Well, somewhat. I think you may be a little more concerned about that than I would be. What we have to do is be able to illustrate that we're using the equipment purchased with Operation Stone Garden funding in support of Operation Stone Garden mission. All I have to do is be able to, to illustrate that, which we can do as long as we're an Operation Stone Garden participant agency. So I'm not concerned that they would arbitrarily come back to us at some point in the future and say, oh, gee, we'd like our stuff back. I, I'm not concerned about that so long as we're uh, doing our part. So I guess my point is more on the notion that this is for public safety um, because the federal government is not giving you this money so that you can better serve Pima County, but rather so that you can help them do their job. And this, these funds definitely come with the strings attached that do not just say this is just for you and for your community. No, no, of course, I've never said that. I'm simply saying there's a collateral benefit to the purchase of that equipment with um, Stone Garden funding that does benefit public safety in Pima County in, a, in an appreciable way. Okay, Sheriff Napier. <laughs> um, so I am interested in uh, which divisions generally work on a Stone Garden deployment. Um, and, it, and I'm not sure what all your different divisions are, but I think there's like command staff and patrol folks mm -hmm. and um, which, uh, who generally uh, does these uh, Stone Garden deployments? It would be generally, um, generally speaking, deputies. Mm -hmm. um, now, deputies would include investigative staff and others. Um, there could be uh, supervisors deployed as part of Operation Stone Garden, but it's line level people. For example, I would never be deployed on Operation Stone Garden, or, or a commander would never be. Right, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, and I, I just want to put this one to rest. I know this was brought up during Call to Public. Um, on the Stone Garden grant application, uh, it asked if your department is fully staffed. And um, how, how would you answer that? Um, I don't know any department in the nation right now that is fully staffed. We're at about 92% of authorized staffing. Uh, we struggle, like every major law enforcement agency, to recruit and retain. Uh, we're in conversations with Arizona Post to modify hiring standards, which have become antiquated and honestly have a disparate impact to people of color, applicants of color traditionally. Um, so we're working very hard to upfit our recruiting to get to 100% staffing. But I won't compromise our hiring standards to get to an arbitrary number. Um, but we are staffed in a way that allows us to provide superior service to people of Pima County. Thank you so much. And my last question is, uh, a month ago, I received a response from you um, for my data request, saying that the data I had wanted, which was amount of people, uh, people turned over to Border Patrol, total arrests, uh, citations, uh, were not previously captured. Uh, do you stand by that statement? In effect, I know we're parsing language a little bit, but I'm very precise in what I want to provide this group. My department did not collect that information. Only information collected was that information required by the DARs. I wasn't certain that an apple was an apple was an apple. And rather than provide you incomplete or inaccurate information that might be used later in a longitudinal sense to evaluate our activity, what I would rather do is that we decide what we're going to count from this point forward and that everybody understands that this is an apple, this is how we count an apple, and this is how many apples there were. And that way we're all on the same page. So some data was in a series of DARs in a file, and I wasn't completely confident in that, and we didn't collect that, meaning in an analytical fashion in a database that was queryable. The data did exist, but it was very loose, and I wasn't confident that A, it was um, the data that I wanted us to use looking forward, but also that it fully counted all those things that this body was most concerned about. So I want to be sure that I'm always providing you the best data and that we all understand what those data sets mean and I just didn't have confidence in that. Thank you so much, Sheriff Napier. Um, and I would uh, call, I, I believe that there is the uh, captain of uh, communications and grants in attendance today. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, captain Ponzio, is it? Thank you so much, Sheriff Thank Napier. You. Um, I really appreciate just it. Just in closing, um, I appreciate the questions, I do. This is important. And I ask again, uh, humbly ask that you, in your deliberations, recommend to the County Board of Supervisors approval of this grant so we can continue forward doing the good work that is possible that we can do together. Let's make this work. We can lay aside politics and we can make this work for Pima County 
It's important to public safety, and I think we can be a shining example of what is right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff. Captain Ponzio, um, I have a few questions for you, and then I'll open it up for the other commissioners. Okay. Um, would it be accurate to describe Pima County Sheriff's Department as fully staffed? Uh, well, good morning, commissioners. My name is Russ Ponzio. I'm, uh, I'm the captain in charge of the um, Communications and Homeland Security Division for the department. Um, I, I believe you just asked that of the sheriff, and his response was, um, we are at 92%, and I'll echo that, we're at 92% staffing. Technological difficulty. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, um, so the, um, this is a, a copy of the grant application here that um, asks, is your agency fully staffed? And then um, down at the bottom it says that Pima County Sheriff's Department is sufficiently staffed, all that. Um, that's, that's why I'm asking this question. Um, so you're saying that, um, I have a question about this. Do you know what this is, sir? Yeah, it pretty much looks like our, our department staffing document. Okay, and um, so as we heard from uh, Sheriff Napier, the, um, it, it's, it's generally some from investigations and patrol that uh, do the Operation Stone Garden deployments. Uh, do you, is, that, is that correct? Yeah, I would say the majority of our personnel that participate in the Stone Garden operations come from our um, come from patrol and investigations, that's, that's true. Okay, um, so what we're looking here, for those that can't see this, is that um, on this staffing matrix, it says that the percentage of uh, patrol is at 86%, and the percentage of investigations is at 77.78%. Um, would you say that that's an accurate, um, let, let's just look at patrol, for instance. Is, is that accurate? Is, are all 86% of, of those deputies available? Um, are they available for deployment? Um, anytime you see a, a percentage of staffing, regardless of what division it is, when you ask me if all of them are available for deployment, um, those numbers include, encompass everything. And, and, and that's not unique to any division or any agency or anything else. When, when we're talking about staffing numbers, we have 80%, 86% of our available staffing um, uh, is in, in patrol. When that, that total number encompasses everybody that's available and that's assigned to patrol. That includes uh, people on military leave, people that are um, on, on, are on FMLA, extended leaves, whatever, whatever leaves are available to, you know, in the county. So, um, and, and as well as the number of, of, well, and overall staffing also includes the number of bodies that are in the, in the academy as well. So, um, yeah, that, so I think I understand your question, but 86% of the people, 80, when, when it's 86% staffed, that's, that's, not all of them are necessarily available. So. Okay, so 86% are how many names are on payroll, basically, but not um, available for deployment. Um, right. And, and I, I think, um, now, that, now that I can walk around a little bit, um, I, I see that there's this unavailable deputies on 14. I, I don't know where this even really came from, but um, it looks like nine on military leave, and, and um, I've also heard that there might be other, um, so that brings this number down to 80%. And I, I think that might be where the gentleman, um, Mr. Hernandez, earlier had mentioned an 80% number. Um, but I, in, in looking at, at some of the staffing, it, it seems that even of that 80%, there might be fewer available um, as there are other special assignments for patrol. Um, are some being um, put on judicial assignment? 
Yeah, to address your first question, I can't really see it from here, but it, um, I see military leave, so I'm assuming that those 14 deputies that are unavailable are the leaves that I was alluding to, if the first one's military leave. And so there's probably other leave uh, availability or FMLAs or things like that below that. Um, yeah, the, the deputies and detectives, um, or I should say we are using, utilizing staffing from patrol and from CAD to, to, to augment and supplement um, judicial security at this point. So th that is a fair statement that there are being deputies and detectives deployed to that, which is true. So that would bring that number below 80% then? That would bring it into the 70s potentially? Do you know how many are doing judicial assignments at the time? I don't, I'm really not, in, I, I, I'm, because of my division, I'm really not in charge of the patrol division. If, I, I believe it's around 15 deputies or so. Okay, total. thank you very much. A combination um, of deputies and detectives, 15 total, I believe. Okay, um, when I'm finished, uh, Commissioner Parrish, you have the floor. Um, okay. Uh, would you say that regular shifts are being adequately covered at this time in Pima County Sheriff's Department? Again, not being assigned to patrol. My, 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 um, and, and speaking with my counterparts, yes, I know that they're, I know that they're, you know, all of us collectively as command staff and the sheriff's department are constantly um, conferring um, about how to, you know, to deploy the available staffing. And I know they're currently taking a look at patrol and, and trying to, um, to optimize um, deployments of, of, or you know, deployments of our available resources. As far as adequately covered, I do force commander once a month, which means I'm, I'm out with the troops at night on shift with them. And when I do force commander, I, 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 I don't see you know, a, a necessarily a, a shortage, but I'm not out there every day. So. Okay. It sounds like, uh, to me, resources are stretched pretty thin. Um, moving away from that, I, um, here is a copy of the email I sent on March 12th. Um, this was my initial data request. Um, and as you can see, the first top questions were for Mr. Huckleberry, and then the next five were for the Pima County Sheriff's Department. And for those who can't um, see it, um, the first is asking for a specific form. The second is vehicle stops and citation numbers under Operation Stone Garden for fiscal year 17 and 18 while Stone Garden was active. The next point is for, and, and these are all for fiscal year 17 and 18. I wanted to know the amount of people turned over to Border Patrol, total arrests, misdemeanor and felony, and then total cost per hour under Stone Garden. Um, so here is a, um, a copy of uh, Sheriff Nipier's response to me, which I received on the 15th. And I wanted to uh, just highlight a few things. Um, so, in your packet, you have a copy of a daily activity report that I handed you, and I can show that later. Um, and and I, I believe the commissioners have a copy of the uh, a, a DAR, so you know what those look like. Um, I was when I asked about vehicle stops and citations numbers, I was told by Sheriff Napier we have previously not captured this information, and then there were a few reasons why. Um, and then the same answers applied for the other data that I had requested. Um, this is a copy of a activity report. For those that don't have a copy in your um, packets, this doesn't look that great because it's really pixely. Um, but you can see right here, we have vehicle stops, citations, felony arrests, actually quite a bit of data. Um, this I chose at random. Some It looks like some nights were a lot more interesting than others. And um, uh, those fields are, are filled out. So um, now, if, if I am correct, as, as communications captain, you deal with uh, public records requests in, in some way? No. Um, I actually, the only, the only records, records requests I deal with um, are directly in regards to this commission. And okay. that's only to streamline the process so you get the information as fast, you know, as soon as possible. Great. The actual overall public records requests go to another division. Okay. Um, so uh, you have a copy of the DAR. Um, and in your estimation, uh, looking at this DAR, um, has Pima County Sheriff's Department previously captured the following information under Stone Garden? Uh, vehicle stops? Yes. 
uh, citations issued. Yes. Number of people turned over to Border Patrol. Yes. And total arrests, including misdemeanor and felonies. Correct, and that's also inclusive in all of the um, uh, the, the data I provided uh, to the to the commission, kind of summarizing all that too. So we've okay. been we've been as transparent as possible. Great. Um, so. Uh, I just want to reiterate that um, the letter I received, um, signed by Sheriff Napier, um, told me that we have previously not captured this information. And there were a few reasons for that. Um, he said that uh, there had been no prior expressed interest in the review of these data, um, but prior to the 2018 uh, DARs that I was requesting, this very body with the Criminal Justice Reform Unit had worked together um, on these data. So uh, at my personal editorializing, I would say that there was a community interest in it. Um, second, the capture of these data uh, was not required under the terms of the Stone Garden program. Um, so do you, are, are you familiar, well you might not be familiar with it, but do you know if the capture of these data are a requirement of the Stone Garden grant? I, honestly, I haven't been involved in the Stone Garden grant, and I've never participated in the Stone Garden, Stone Garden operation. I know that we are um, obligated to provide a, a certain amount of data. I would say that that I would assume that that data we provide is, um, you know, through the DARs that the you know de that the uh, participating deputies uh, provide. So um, that I mean, that's all I know. That's all. Okay. Um, thank you. And uh, this is a copy of the 2018 DHS Notice of Funding Opportunity. Uh, for Operation Stone Garden. Once again, it's a, a little pixelated up here, but this is this is the reporting procedures and and just requirements that these data are collected and furnished to FEMA and and DHS. So um, once again, I was told that uh, capture of these data are not required under the Stone Garden program. Um, and then lastly, uh, it says our records management system is not well designed to capture these. Um, would you answer for me, is the P drive, uh, your records management system, well designed to capture operation specific data of this type? Well, the, the P drive is the, um, is the folder that, share, that they pretty much, I mean there are, there are other folders as well, but the P drive for the most part is the folder in which almost all data and information for um, the entire department is stored within different subfolders you know, in, that, in that database. So that, the P drive doesn't necessarily itself capture the data, um, the, the data is captured in other methods and then stored on the P drive, does that make okay. sense? Okay, so, so there is a, a, a place that it resides? Yes. Okay, great. Um, okay, um, I, am, I only have a few more questions uh, and then we'll open it up uh, here. So on, on March 10, uh, 12th, I sent in my data request and received a, a response from Sheriff Napier on the 15th. Did my request go through the usual channels for uh, this fulfillment? For the CLEPSI board, yes. It, came, it, it, went, through, it, it went through normal channels, yes. Okay, uh, would, you, would you describe how, how my request came through and, and what happened with it? I don't know the exact, um, uh, how it exactly goes, but any time that you guys submit a request, it goes to the sheriff, the chiefs, the command staff, I mean, the command staff involved, me being one of them. Um, I believe um, my, my grants manager, Teresa Wilson, is also con um, involved in that. I'm not sure if our records section or you know, is or not, only because, like I said, most Stone Garden grants we handle, or I'm sorry, most uh, CLEPSI requests we handle directly for you guys, only to expedite the process. So um, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the, basically the kind of the email list that I know of. Okay, great. Um, and did, uh, did you and your staff um, help Sheriff Napier write uh, this response to me? Um, did you inform him with data? No. Okay. Um, why not? Um, the best that I can remember is we were in the process of gathering some information, and then the, the sheriff had advised us that he was going to submit a response to Clepsi directly from him. So the data were being compiled in response to my request, but then I received um, this letter from the sheriff saying that he didn't have the data. 
that's what it looks like to me. And yeah. you, I don't and, want to put you in the position of having no, to answer and we, that. No, and we had just started gathering the data, so I didn't even, I, at that point in time, I didn't even know what data was available. Mm -hmm. um, did he ask you if data were available? No. No, no. okay. Um, I think that's all I have. Um, do we have, now I can sit down, and we have Commissioner uh, Parrish is next. Captain Ponzio, are you in charge of records? I am not. So is there a reason the sheriff would normally go to ask you for records that you're not in charge of? No, and that's what I was trying to explain. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're trying to explain. I'm just trying to help get the answer out there. Also, uh, Captain Ponzio, when uh, Stone Garden pays overtime, is that in replacement for the deputy's normal 40 hours of duty? Or do they work that as extra duty? It's extra duty. And that's work that they volunteer for? Yes. And there's at sometimes this process can be very competitive with people trying to get it more more shifts than maybe they would normally get? Sometimes people are trying, they're actively working to get an extra job. Yes. Okay. Um, do, does our staffing level, has it ever impaired our ability to fill Stone Garden operations? No. What's the span of control of a sergeant? Usually one to five, six. Okay. So it's reasonable to assume that if you have a sergeant working a Stone Garden operation in say three points, he's got five deputies working? Yes. Is that an excessive number of deputies? I don't understand your question. It, well, does that interfere with the Pima County Sheriff's Department operation, take, let, allowing those deputies to no. work extra time? You're talking about uh, yes. in, in three points as a Stone Garden operation. Yes. No, it doesn't impair. No. Okay. Absolutely not. All right. And as far as that goes, I have no questions about that anymore, but I wanted to talk about this real quick on the board there. Um, those DARs, are, are those processed on our computer or are they hand printed by deputies? I, I, you know? was, I don't know. Okay. The I only, filled them out for years. They're, they're hand printed. Okay. And okay. The only um, thing I know about the DARs is as after July 8th of 2018, mm -hmm. they were electronically input into the, into the Homeland Security's network. Okay. And prior to that, which was right before I retired, prior to that, we filled them out by hand. So you'd have, um, that would indicate if they're filled out by hand and just stored, um, based on your estimation, if you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. That would, I think, be accurately described by our records management system is not well designed to capture the operation specific data. Of this. So in other words, the, the data is very difficult to compile if you're going back over trying to recreate these sheets that deputies have and put them onto a computer. Yeah, my understanding is someone's, I, I believe it was the AHO uh, public safety sports specialist that was doing that, that was taking all the data and transferring it from, I, I didn't know if it was handwritten or digital, yeah. but transferring the data onto a, onto a collective spreadsheet. Fairly so. laborious process, I'm sure. Yes. Thank you. Um, one, one moment, and yes, uh, Captain Ponzio, um, how long did it take to pull the DARs that I had requested? Um, I, I know that, that Teresa pulled the DARs. I pulled, I pulled some of the other information because it had to be redacted. So I, if, I, if I might defer, or you can ask Teresa directly, I'm not sure, the DARs? Most of the day, she Okay, said. so one day. Okay. And then how long did it take you to uh, do the data retrieval um, using the method you used? Um, including redaction. Yeah, it's, it's no different method. I just had to go through and make sure, and, and I had to redact some personal, you know, some some information, personal information from arrest records and stuff. Sure. Um, it was a f five or six hour process. Five or six hours. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and and thank you for for your work. Um, and uh, it's a uh, Commissioner McNichols and then Commissioner Rodriguez. Okay. So having worked in law enforcement. Uh, my question is, uh, is your records management system the P drive, or is your records management system the Spillman system? Um, how do you manage, where, what, what program do you use to keep track of your, your CAD, your calls for service, your reports? That's Spillman. I mean, that, that's, yeah, that's the electronic database that we use for that. And the program software and everything. And within that Spielman system, there are only so many different things that when it's set up that you can extract information from it. For instance, calls for service, different types of calls. So in my understanding of record management systems, sometimes we, uh, 
don't always have all the information we want to collect from a system when we purchase it. Sometimes you have to go in and either you have them do a technological add to it where they recreate new fields for you to either add input to or not add input to where it makes it easier to withdraw certain information and types of information. Um, if I understand your, your question correctly, there's, uh, when, you're, when you're dealing with a Spillman system like that, you, you, you can tend to be limited on the amount of data queries you can conduct. And, 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 and so, so this commission has asked questions from the sheriff about stuff that is not normally captured in that records management system. And so because there's not necessarily a thing to say how many particular types of different stops you have with another agency or how many different types of interactions you have with Border Patrol, those things may not have been captured prior to this commission existing. And I believe what the sheriff talked about earlier and when he spoke, not only today, but in prior meetings, he talked about wanting to find out what information it was that we wanted to collect. So that way they could go back and make certain tweaks to their system so they would be able to have those numbers. So if you take multiple handwritten daily activity reports that isn't necessarily <coughs> built into uh, their records management system, and you take some that may be written in an electronic format on a Word document, some that are completed that may be scanned and put into a PDF system, and then they might all get massively stored on what I'm assuming is a P drive where all that data goes. You don't necessarily have a thing where you can click the magic button and say, I want you to sort and separate every stop, and that instantly pops up to. That's what we as a commission have asked them to do, um, but that's not what they're able to do at the click of a, a stamp of a finger or a click of a mouse to, to withdraw that information. So I think the Sheriff's Department has made great efforts in trying to let us know that we need to let him know what type of information we want so that way he can work with us. The more specific we get to helping him with the information, the better he can answer our questions. But to just go up here and to, to basically try to play from a multiple different set of angles saying, this is what I was asking for, um, it's not as easy as clicking a mouse and getting that information. So I think we have to be aware of that and understand that. So when they're doing their due diligence to help us, we can help them in the future by telling them what we want specifically ahead of time. So I just wanted to clarify that you didn't have all these um, different stats easily accessible prior to today or to this commission existing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair uh, McNichols. Um, and then uh, I will um, get to the questions over there. I, I just wanted to clarify, um, so it, it did take you uh, four or five hours to furnish these data for, for us. Yes, okay. uh, more than, I mean, the entire day, I would say. It was, okay, so it was, it was one work day um, mm -hmm. to get that. So it wasn't a click of the button. It took one work day to furnish mm -hmm. these data. Yeah. But they were in the system. Yes. You were able to retrieve them. They were already there. You just had to work the data and then um, redact some things and yes. stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Rodriguez. Um, I'm gonna ask this question again. Um, so Operation Stone Garden is after the first 40 hours of a deputy, right? Yes, Commissioner, no, and, and to answer your question, a, a deputy works a regular shift, or a detective works a regular shift doing their regular assigned duties. Operation Stone Garden is in addition to that, and it's, and it's the federally funded overtime to allow them to do that. Right. Um, do we have any caps on the amount of hours and of a deputy can work? Yes, there are uh, very strict um, off-duty and, and hours that they're allowed to work, and we, and we abide by them. It's, it's 64 hours total in a week is what they're allowed to do. So 24 hours on top of the original 40 hours. Yes. And, and I assume the 24 hours fit for those uh, deputies that do get deployed on Burst and Stone Garden and working on an investigation, so do you allow those hours to be worked? Or if there's a, an investigation going on, the officer gets to work over 24 hours. 
Very rarely does that happen that we allow someone to work over 24 hours, if I understand your, your question correctly. Um, it would have to be an extreme extenuating circumstance to have that happen. And if it does happen, more than nine times out of 10, it's because the deputies already worked their 40 hours, their 24 hours of off duty, and maybe being subject to being called out, say, as a homicide detective. And when there's no other way, we, can, you know, we can't avoid them having to go on a, on a, you know, on a, on a call out for, um, you know, for operational necessity. So in essence, they could work over their 64 hours with, a, you know, with supervisor and command approval. That happens very rarely. Okay. So. And um, if uh, would you agree that the uh, that the performance schedule for a deputy, especially doing this kind of work, would it be just limited to 40 hours? Because their performance would not be the same after those. And this goes in regards to labor practices and union. I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. I'm trying. So, do you think the officers are performing their best after working 40 hours? Oh, do they perform 20? their best after yeah. working 40 hours? Um, I'll be honest with you. All of us in this room, as law enforcement professionals, we're not. Even though you know nationally, a 40-hour work week is pretty much an accepted week. That's not an accepted week for us. I mean, we we're so accustomed to working more than 40 hours that uh, I don't think that any any law enforcement officers. Um, ability to perform their job is 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 uh, inhibited whatsoever by working more than 40 hours because we we do it almost on a weekly basis. All right, and do you have any rules or regulations in regards to officers who are not doing anything after the 40 hours under Operation Stone Garden? Do we have any rules? For example, if they are not deployed for an investigation or anything, so do you have any way to tap in and say, hey, just go home instead instead of wasting the money? or putting more hours just by waiting? Are you talking about during the operation? Like if I'm yeah, working Yeah, after the 40 hours. After 40 hours. For example, they sign up for a shift, there are no persons don't guard in hours, there's nothing going on, do they get to go home or they have to wait until something happens? Um, Again, I think I understand your question. So they're, after their 40 hour work week, if they're deployed for a stone garden operation, those, those, those operations are for a designated time period. So they would, they would work that time period. So, the, the, so the time period, but the time period, it's already contributing to an existing investigation or is something that they're just waiting to happen? No, the time period is set as a predetermined operation in conjunction with a federal partner. So, so we designate, say, um, Sonoida Highway is a stone, garden, stone garden op for tomorrow night. And it's from 2000 to you know to, to zero 100 hours or 2000 you know eight o'clock at night until midnight. That's the stone garden up. So they would work those four hours. That makes I think sense. she's also asking one other thing. They don't sit around and wait. Stone garden operations are proactive. That officer's job is during that time period that he has to work is to be out there looking for things, not waiting for something to happen. They're out there working, trying to find problems. So they're trying to find them. It's not a already existent thing happening. I, that's a clarification I want to get to. Okay, then, yeah, then yes, obviously any Stone Garden mission is going to be a proactive patrol of some kind. So we're, we're right. We're out, we're out there trying to detect things and deter things. Thank you. Commissioner, oh, uh, sorry, um, Co-Chair McNichols wanted a comment and then uh, Commissioner Luna. When it, when it came to pulling stats and this may be for No, I'd say the majority of the information was available. I think as as we've gone on, we've we've added things to the database in in regards to the to the commission's response for or request for information. Thanks. Commissioner Luna. So, saying regarding the data collection, am I to understand you do not have an IT department or an IT person that uh, manages the system? IT manages our entire. Computer, you know, computer system. I mean, of, of all the databases and all of the law enforcement networks and everything. We have an IT section that how, that that is in charge of all that. Okay. But um, each individual division section, they're all they, they they all have their individual. Um,
folders and, and sections under the P drive. And then in addition to that, we also have a records management section that houses all of the, you know, all the records in addition to, in addition to the P drive that we have. So our records management section houses all records. P drive is just a working computer drive um, that has different subfolders to allow the different sections and, and units in the department to, a place to house information. Okay. And as you were gathering the information uh, requested by the sheriff, did you contact that, that IT department or anyone else uh, with help in crunching the numbers? No, because the data is there. It's a matter of just being able to find it on the, on the P drive and, 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 and be directed to either where it is or have knowledge of where it is and then pull that information. So I don't, I don't think we need to involve the IT department to do that, no. Okay, because um, Commissioner Parrish, I believe, was the one that said that not everybody has, has access to, to the numbers or to the reports, but usually, just I guess, point of uh, information, usually you can go to that department and they can go into the raw data and be able to develop ways to crunch the numbers. Right. Um, our, our, P drive, our IT department can set limitations on folders within the P drive, absolutely, like I said, but those that are, uh, have, need to have access to the P drive for either um, data input or data collection have, have the correct access. So we all have access and availability to that, to that folder. So you do have access to all the, the information, but it seems to me that we didn't get all the information. And you have all the information now. You have all the information that you requested in front of you today. Uh, thank you. Uh, did we have any other uh, questions for Captain Ponzio? No? Okay. Thank you very much, Captain. Um, do we have discussion uh, on the motion? Sir, please approach. Hi, my name is John Stecky. I'm, I'm the chief in charge of Support Bureau, and uh, I wanted to offer some clarifying points. There were a couple questions that, that the sheriff wasn't able to get into some details. Um, I know there was a, a question in regards to U-9 visas. We do have a policy in place. Long and the short of it is those requests go to our Criminal Investigations Division Commander, and they are vetted for the process. If, if uh, that person that's applying for that visa meets the parameters, then it's approved and sent back. So we do have a process in place for the U-9s. Um, in regards to Commissioner Haney's question, um, bear with me just one second. Uh, in regards to, uh, in regards to um, body recoveries, uh, uh, we, we, we do keep that data. Uh, I know the sheriff didn't have it available, but um, it, in 2015, 42, and these are, this is not all, all body recoveries across Pima County, but those in areas where we can anticipate it may be a migrant. Um, in 2015, 42. In 2016, 32. Uh, 2017, 89. 2018, 65. And 2019, year to date, is 16. Um, and just, I think it's already been clarified, but just to add a couple of things to differentiate, because there was a question in regards to uh, our records management system that is in fact Spillman and is very different than P drive uh, as captain was talking about a moment ago the P drive is basically an electronic storage device largely for work product within the sheriff's department um, the DARs uh, historically have been stored there and and I believe that there's there's concerns in regards to the lack of transparency on the sheriff's response and I think he spoke to it earlier uh, where he, he he was referring to pulling data from Spillman which is that is our go-to on, on things where you can easily access information um, of, of this type of nature. However, that's that the, the specific questions of your concern, it's, it's, it's difficult to extract it from Spillman. Now, um, a more difficult uh, extraction is from the actual forms themselves, the DARs, which are stored on the P drive, that's correct. And as uh, Captain Ponzio discussed, it does take time. And I think the sheriff wanted to make sure he gave the most accurate and timely information possible. Um, quite honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll take responsibility for, for not presenting that information further and making sure that the sheriff knew in his response that we could extract this from hand, you know, the hand created data. Um, so that, that's my fault uh, for not clarifying that for the sheriff. He was trying to be as transparent as he could with the information that he had. Um, and so I believe uh, that the, the, the data from the DARs that you've requested is, is being provided. 
it's not, uh, you know, it wasn't the sheriff's design to, to, to lack that transparency or conceal anything. We have it, we're open. Um, in fact, our intent is to, is to uh, post this data on our website. In fact, with our rural safety initiative, it is post, uh, on our, posted on our website uh, for all to view. So that information is available, apologies. Uh, again, I'll take responsibility for not insisting that that, that be extracted. He wanted to use um, what we find to be the most reliable data, which is within the Spillman system, that is our actual records management system, as opposed to a work product storage device, which is the P drive. So. Thank you, uh, Chief Stuckey? Yes, ma'am, thank it? you. Okay, um, so I, I guess uh, Sheriff Napier's response for being um, accurate and timely was to tell me that the data were not captured and unavailable. But thank you very much. Um, so do we have more discussion among commissioners and then we can take our vote and then we can move on to the next. Um, uh, Commissioner Garcia. No, it, it was just never mind. Thank you, Madam Chair, appreciate it. Thank you. The, the motion is on the floor. We're having discussion um, before. I'm not sure if this would be uh, up for discussion. Oh, I'm sorry, was someone. Chairman Serrato, please. Oh, I mean, sorry, not chairman. Chairman. <laughs> Used to be. Commissioner. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if this would be a motion or just part of discussion, but due to the fact that there's been a history in this commission of misrepresenting our votes out in the community, can we do a roll call when we do a vote for this? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Garcia. <clears throat> there, I just want to, I was going to ask a question, but it really isn't a question. Um, we know full well that we've wanted this kind of information for a long time. It's not, it's not a shock. It's not a surprise that we're interested in this. I think it was Commissioner Nichols that, oh, you know, we've never captured this, we've not been told. I mean, come on, we've had these problems in Pima County for a long time. I'm talking about issues of racial profiling and other data that has to be collected. Uh, it's not brand new, and so what I'm saying is that Operation Stone Garden grants continue and further um, the racial profiling. There's no question about it. Uh, look at the responsibilities. They have to be part of saturation patrols. They have to do interdiction operations to have reasonable suspicion stops of people that may look undocumented. Uh, and they have. That's not what it says. And it's. It just said it's false. It says reasonable suspicion stops. It does not say Commissioner Parrish? You, reasonable you have the floor suspicion after Commissioner stops, Garcia. exactly, of potential. I'm sorry? Reasonable suspicion stops a potential undocumented aliens. You tell me, exactly. Tell me. You're not going to get pulled over like, uh, you know, my family members are. But don't, you know, this is the, this is within. This is within uh, the responsibilities. And based on what we've lived, I mean, it's, it's really problematic. I, I am uh, against, of course. Uh, even the specific responsibilities. Uh, let's face it, money runs everything, including drugs. And does oh, Stone Garden get to any of the money people? No, they never do. And you're gonna say, well, that's not part of the federal thing, but really, that's what does it. The banks and all of that that keeps the drug rolling. We talk about fentanyl and such. That was created also by the, the legal opioid uh, business, and now we have this. What I'm saying to you is Pima County has its challenges, and we should not be adding on a collaborative attempt and, uh, with the uh, federal immigration authorities, and that's what this is. Uh, it is to collaborate with them. It's stead it says it right here. I, I don't really understand why why it's listed, it's listed right here, why we're arguing about that. We've got a lot of problems. We didn't even address the indirect cost of Pima County. The sheriff talks about it and then says, well, we get indirect benefits, so the, the, the helicopter to save somebody and therefore we should know. Transparency doesn't just mean finding out after the fact, it's before we go in. Transparent means our local government should be involved in this. Our federal government should be involved with this. That's part of transparency, too. Um, 
because in the end, you know that money drives, and if the feds are giving the, us the money, we have to do fed work. And as the gentleman said, we should be committed to Pima County. And we have to stop talking out of both sides of our mouth that say, yes, we're going to support border security measures that the federal government says and then says, no, we're not doing any border security measures. We're just helping out the, the people in Oro Valley, in Ajo and in Green Valley because we don't have enough sheriffs. We're saying both things at once. And so, as you know, I'm against uh, us receiving these grants. I think um, it's only creating more insecurity less, uh, it, instead of more security for Pima County. Commissioner Parrish, I promise you the floor. Um, I'm actually um, gonna vote for this. I know it's a big shock to everybody, but the, it's important that we understand what we're really saying here. Oh, it's a, thank you. It's important that we really understand what we're saying here because, you know, we do have a lot of problems in this community. Some of them are things like fentanyl and and child uh, sex trafficking of women and children, just people trafficking for other purposes. Um, and, you know, we all talk and, and we listen to the news media. Everybody says, I'm in favor of border security, but they don't want to build the wall. And this is not the wall. This is about not only border, but community safety. 70,000 Americans died last year of opioid overdoses, and a lot of that fentanyl came through Pima County. And, because we've got issues, we want to throw up our hands and say, you know what, I'm sorry that 70,000 people died, but we're not going to do anything. We know the drug cartels are working hard in Pima County, but we're not going to do anything. And by doing anything, we're accepting money from the federal government so we can support operations to keep Americans, non-Americans, and other people safe. You know, the sheriff talk, you know, talked a little bit about people giving up and running out and flagging us down. And during my career, that happened a lot. Sometimes it was on a stone garden operation. Sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes I'd be out by Sassabee doing a stone garden operation. And you know the first person on scene to a car accident when people are hurt and bad? It's a border patrol agent. And he's there taking care of our citizens until we can get there. And maybe they're not citizens, but he's there. He or she is there working hard for the public safety. So for anybody to say putting more cops into the rural areas is a bad thing, is not, is not paying attention to reality and what they are doing, they should work for the cartel because they're the best, best speakers on their behalf because the cartels want us to vote no, the cartels don't want border security, the cartels don't mind 70,000 Americans dying every year, they don't mind when children and women get trafficked for sexual purposes or any other purpose. Well, I mind. And I'm gonna vote th that we approve this. And if you don't mind, then vote the other way. But it doesn't make any sense because we've got problems we're gonna throw in the towel. That doesn't make sense. And that's not who we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to throw in the towel. We're supposed to be working every day to get better and better on every, the moral, on the moral issues as well but we don't throw in the towel and victimize our own citizens. Thanks. More discussion? Commissioner Luna. Yes, hi. Well, um, many of you already know this is my first day on the commission, so yay. Um, I, I did read up a lot and one of one of my main things was transparency and I said I just I just want to see the numbers I want to see the benefits I'm disappointed I'm, I'm so disappointed I, I really wanted transparency and I'm not I'm not feeling like um, we're being uh, respected as commissioners um, because we need all the facts in order to make an informed and intelligent decision and you know and I did ask the sheriff if anything would change if Stone Garden was rejected, and, and he said no, everything's gonna continue as is. So I'm not sure I have a lot of motivation to vote for it. Uh, I'm concerned about transparency. I don't think it's going to happen. I wish I wish it, it were. I wish I felt confident about it. Um, and unfortunately, perhaps for, for the sheriff's deputies, I'm gonna to wanna to vote no on this. Thank you, Commissioner. Chairman.
I think ultimately every police officer who goes to work wonders how he can make a difference for a day. Nobody goes to work and say, how can I go make someone's life miserable? In the midst of investigating collisions or someone being a victim of a crime, you're not concerned about whether they're here legally, illegally, documented, undocumented. You're concerned about making sure that they have the help that they need at that time. The ultimate goal for law enforcement is voluntary compliance with our laws. If we have voluntary compliance with the laws of the land, there is no need to have police officers because people know what the laws are. A police officer in the state of Arizona is sworn. He takes an oath of office. It doesn't matter if you're Tucson PD, Phoenix PD, Patagonia Marshal's office, Santa Cruz, Pima County, Highway Patrol. You take an oath of office to protect and uphold the United States Constitution and its laws. You take an oath to hold up the Arizona State Constitution and its laws. You go through the same certification. So if you're a Nogales police officer in Flagstaff, Arizona, you can take enforcement action. You have the same authority as a Flagstaff guy has. It is a statewide certification. The very first thing that people cut when it comes to staffing and things like that in law enforcement tends to be the community outreach and the education factor. We want our people to be educated. Guys who are cops that I know have given their lives to being involved in their communities and trying to make a difference. So where something like Stone Garden helps is it does allow the sheriff's budget to be supported, uh, where those monies, ultimately the Board of Supervisors decide, do we want this equipment and this overtime to come from the county budget, the state budget, or the federal budget? That is their decision to make. We have a sheriff who's willing to work with people that most sheriffs wouldn't be willing to work with. We have information that's not necessarily readily available through spillmen, but can be made available through extra effort. And I think ultimately um, we need to make a decision on how we can best help the people and the citizens of Pima County and voluntary compliance with the laws. That's the first thing. And then if that doesn't work, we need to change the laws because a police officer is going to enforce the laws that he's upheld to, to enforce. So with that being said, I think we should take a vote. I think we pretty much know where most of us stand. So. I did want to say something. Uh, Commissioner Sorrell. Thank you, Kevin, for bringing up the law and constitution. And I think the constant notion that those of us here that have a problem with Stone Garden, the constant notion that we are saying that police officers are, have a secret agenda in this, I think is not absolutely tr true, uh, really. To, here's the thing about DHS. They're not about following the law. DHS and what we've seen under this administration is that what they do is they follow policy. And policy is changing at the whim of the administration. DHS is not out there upholding the Constitution by putting children in cages and families under bridges. So while we may be able to have conversations with the sheriff, and while my, he as a person or in his morality might be, uh, might be the kind of person that will stick to what the law is, the law of the land, he is, we are going into an agreement with DHS that has seen children this year, too, die under their care. Small, tiny children, like my child, die. Horrible deaths under their care. What we're saying is that at this moment, DHS is rogue. And this program doesn't have any metrics, it doesn't have any goals, it doesn't have any form of accountability. So what we're saying is that right at this moment, Stone Garden, as a, a uh, an operation, we should not have that. And we understand that law enforcement is for enforcing laws, but DHS is not out there enforcing laws. They're out there enforcing the whim of a racist precedent that is vehemently xenophobic. And one point something million that we're putting here is not going to cripple the sheriff's department. We know that because we know the budget. Um, so I think we have to make 
distinctions between what our Constitution says, what our Arizona law says, and what DHS is out there forcing police departments and their own rank and file to do. And they are forcing them to do inhumane things to families and to young children. Um, and that is why this is absolutely political, all due respect to Sheriff Napier, but politics aside, no, I will not put politics aside because DHS is all about politics. It's all about politics. And as we saw the number of dead bodies that they're encountering, having Operation Stone Garden hasn't stopped dead bodies from piling up. It, will, it does not deter families who are desperate from coming. And then what we also see at the border is the massive criminalization of refugees. That's another thing that's not part of our Constitution. And might I might remind everyone, it's against international treaty laws. It is absolutely legal to seek asylum and we are caging people. We are destroying people in the process. And I, as a 25 year resident of Tucson, refuse to take Stone Garden money because I understand the realities of that. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, do we have any other comments? Um, so I just wanted to speak a little bit. Um, our men and women, our men and women of the Pima County Sheriff's Department in uniform, they are ours, um, are already stressed to the max. Um, they're pulling overtime to cover regular shifts. Um, they're covering jail shifts at the Pima County Jail. And there is talk within the department of compulsory 12 hour shifts for these officers. Is this fair to them to put more of a burden on them to do more overtime? The Pima County Sheriff's Department annual budget is around $165 million. And we're talking about $1.2 million here for overtime and for ERE pensions. We've been told by the sheriff himself, and as Commissioner Luna mentioned, that this job will get done. And I, I deeply appreciate uh, Commissioner Parrish's passion about um, things like fentanyl and, and methamphetamine in our communities. But we've been assured that this job will continue to be done. These drugs will continue to be interdicted. So as we look at an already stressed staffing level here, we don't need to do Border Patrol's job. We're at 70, 72% staffing for patrol, and Border Patrol has 4,500 agents in the Tucson sector. Not to mention the Office of Inspector General report that had serious issues with the Stone Garden grant seven major points that said the Stone Garden grant needs to have better accountability, there's no measure on its effectiveness, and it needs to improve. Lastly, um, I want to talk about transparency. Um, Sheriff Napier himself says that he, he wants transparency. Um, he says he's committed to it. He says that he sees that there is value in this commission and he wants to provide that to us. My questions that I posed to him were based on information we had been given last year. These were not obscure. These were not hard to understand. And they were things pulled directly from the daily activity reports that we had from 2016 and 2017. This should, this should not have been something um, very difficult to procure, um, although there was some time involved, and I, I appreciate, appreciate that. Um, in, in his response, I wasn't told, hold on, this is gonna take an, a, a full day to get it, but I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, it wasn't a conversation, I don't know exactly what you mean, which apples and which oranges do you mean here, this was, we have not previously captured these, uh, these data. When we know we have previously 
been supplied them last year by the Criminal Justice Reform Unit. I didn't ask for anything extra. I asked for exactly what we had been given last year. I have deep concerns about transparency. And if we're moving forward, I would have to act on faith that all of a sudden this would change. I don't have faith in, in that. We need to be shown that there is this cooperation and this commitment to transparency first. And for these three reasons, that's why I am going to vote no for the Stone Garden Grant. And with that said, uh, could we do a roll call vote, please, Julie? Thank you. Commissioner Parrish. We're supposed to get out of here at 11, it's 11.30, so. Yeah. Let's just vote. Okay, uh, the motion on the floor is the uh, acceptance of the, um, it's the overtime and mileage portion of the Stone Garden Grant. Roll call vote, please. Steve Borazon. In favor. Isabel Garcia. No. George Haney? Yes. Kristen Lundrum? No. Dorlina Luna? No. Kevin McNichols? Yes. Terry Parrish? Yes. Tierra Rainey? No. Jessica Rodriguez? No. Zaira Serrato? No. Six to four. Nays have it, the motion fails. Um, no, these are separate. Okay, I see. Yeah, if someone could, um, so Commissioner Parrish just brought up that um, we can't even discuss item seven because if, of the overtime and... If they turn down the, op the ability to have an operation... You can't have one without the other. That's, uh, okay. So, so if, you're, if you're voting against the overtime, yeah, there's, no, there's no point in voting for or against the equipment. Thank you. That's correct. Um, okay. Commissioner Garcia. We're an advisory committee, so I don't know that that's... Uh, can't we vote on it anyway because we're advisory i mean it, that what is if, true well, what yeah. if the board thinks differently on the first section i, don't know. I, just think I be believe that's probably accurate we could recommend whatever we want since it's non-binding okay <coughs> that's correct um would someone like to move item seven second uh do do we have a uh it's Chief Stuckey, did you want to uh, discuss the equipment purchases or did you want to have someone else do it? Well, we do have folks here that can discuss the equipment specifically if you'd like some, some detailed answer on that. Did we have any question about um, the equipment purchases? Commissioner? I, I had a, a few questions about the vigilant database. Can we, just because of time, like how much time are we going to extend this meeting for? It looks like I'm the only one asking questions. I only have a few, and then we'll, we'll do it, and then that's it. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I had a question. Uh, so are, are you fairly familiar with the, the Vigilant database that you use? I use the system, yes. Okay, um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can choose to toggle um, who you share these data with. Yes. Okay, and as far as I know, um, you can go through and you can, you can choose kind of line by line who you share it with. It's not on off, it's not binary. You can, you can selectively choose who you share these data with. 
I believe so. Okay, but once you toggle um, the the share button on for the data, then it's all data. So it's it's not um, a portion of the data would be uh, shared with this entity, but not this data. I believe you can choose what you if you put in specific things that we're looking for. We can just do it within our agency. It does okay. not go out to everybody. Okay. Um, on the grant, and I don't know, are you familiar with the, the grant application portion? I am not. Okay, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. Um, I, I am. And uh, so on the grant application, it mentions that, it doesn't even matter. Um, it mentions that uh, these data would be shared with Border Patrol because Border Patrol also has access to the Vigilant database. Is that correct, as far as you know? As far as I know, they do. And as far as I know right now, we do share with all law enforcement agencies. Okay. How many license plate scanners do we currently have in the department? I believe we have five vehicles outfitted with two cameras each. Okay. And that's the auto theft unit and the drug interdiction? Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, in the grant application, it, you might not be able to answer this question, but uh, you can talk to me about that. Um, so in the grant application, it, it talked about how um, the license plates that are scanned during non-Stone Garden hours would be uploaded to the Vigilant database and also be um, accessible to Border Patrol. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, and, and that's currently what the arrangement is right now for the license plate scanners? I believe, again, I don't know that we got them initial ones with anything to do with Stone Garden because we did not have Stone Garden when we purchased them. Uh, we purchased them and again, we share with all law enforcement agencies at this time. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Um, did we have any other questions about uh, the equipment purchases? We're good? Okay, uh, any discussion? Hearing none, if we could do it, yes, thank you. Roll call vote, please. Steve Borazon? Yes. Isabel Garcia? No. George Haney? Yes. Christian Lundrum? No. Doralina Luna? No. Kevin McNichols? Yes. Terry Parrish? Yes. Tara Rainey? No. Jessica Rodriguez? No. Zaira Serato? No. It's four to six. Motion fails. I would move to adjourn this meeting. Thank you all.